with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had gathered, he said to them, My brothers, although I had done nothing against our people or our ancestral customs, I was handed over to the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. After trying my case, the Romans wanted to release me because they found nothing against me deserving the death penalty. But when the Jews objected, I was obliged to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no accusation to make against my own nation. This is the reason, then, I have requested to see you and to speak with you, for it is on account of the hope of Israel that I wear these chains. He remained for two full years in these lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The, the just, just will gaze, gaze on, on your face, face O Lord. Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His searching glance is on mankind. The just, the just will gaze, will gaze on, on your face, face O Lord. Lord. The Lord searches the just and the wicked, the lover of violence he hates. For the Lord is just, he loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. The, the just will gaze on the face of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send to you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved, and the one who had also reclined upon his chest during the supper, and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. 
So the word spread among the brothers that the disciple would not die. But Jesus had not told him that he would not die, just, what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testifies to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. There are also many other things that Jesus did, but if these were to be described individually, I do not think the whole world would contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. The goal of our faith is the same goal of matrimony, martyrdom. We are intending, striving, desiring to be martyrs. In that vein, then, it is appropriate that we understand what martyrdom means lest we pursue a path that leads us away for our intended goal. And martyrdom is not simply the laying down of our life for a cause. I give up my life that the Chiefs may actually win the Super Bowl again this year, so to speak. Martyrdom is a complete gift of the self, a surrendering and offering of the total self to the one I love. And while it is most commonly understood in red martyrdom, blood martyrdom, there are two forms of martyrdom, that which is red, that which is white. We see both demonstrated in the apostles. We see both demonstrated in our readings, Paul and the beloved disciple. In both instances, those involved have totally, completely offered their life over to our Lord in love. For those who have the red martyrdom, it is a literal offering. They are killed, and they give up their life to God. Given the choice, protect your life, hold on to it, or give it over to our Lord for his sake, they literally give up their life. The beloved disciple is not murdered. He is not red martyred. And yet we still hold, we still tell that he is a martyr. He has white martyrdom. Where he lived his life in completeness of giving his life over to God. Of living his life in such a way that everything he did was an offering over to our Lord in love. A total gift of the self, all I am God, is yours. So much so that had he been asked to give his life for our Lord, literally, he would have. It never came. The same is true then with marriage. There's this understanding of, hey, I'm marrying my wife and my husband. I'm giving myself totally to them. And then if push came to shove and I had to like lay on a grenade for them, I would do it. Chances of me having to land on a grenade for them is pretty small. But that doesn't mean I'm still not called to totally give myself over to them to make of myself this entire gift of myself to them and live my life in such a way that all that I am is theirs and that should that grenade come, yeah, I would do it. The goal of the faith is the goal of marriage. Martyrdom. We are saying yes, we are saying I do to giving our entire self as an offering to the one we love just as our spouse has done the same for us. This is Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit is sent by the Father and the Son to the apostles to enable them, empower them to do just that. Be martyrs. Be it red or white, give yourself completely over to the God who loves you and has given himself over to you. This is in turn then what we are not just preparing to celebrate, we are preparing to live. We are preparing to say yes to, that like the apostles, we may receive the Holy Spirit, go out and be martyrs for God, literal or white. 
in that vein then, in that help then, the Lord in his grace has provided us these last three days leading up to today and then Pentecost thereof, three memorial feasts back to back to back of martyrs, of St. Justin, of St. Marcellinus and Peter, of St. Charles and companions to give us examples of how this looks. And he gives us the red and then today he gives us the white. And so we can look to these martyrs for the example of how do I make that total gift of self? How do I grow in that love so that I say yes, I say I do in love to that self gift. And like with the three red martyrs that he gives us leading up to Pentecost, he gives us three lessons. The first is humility. In humility, I let go of myself and give myself away. I say I do. And so our first pursuit is to grow in humility. This is achieved in many ways, but the two that are given to us to con contemplate on is obedience to every one of our Lord's commandments, no matter how small doctrines and teachings of the church, and regular confession, where we regularly practice an obedience to his commands, not my will, but yours, and we regularly go to him and say, I'm broken, I'm sinful, help me. The second is thanksgiving, that our Lord loved us so much he literally says thank you for the cross. The entire Eucharistic feast, the Last Supper, is thanksgiving. That's its literal translation. That he looks at us and he says they are, us, his murderers, are a gift from God the Father. And so he's grateful to go to the cross for our sake. So in turn then, we practice daily gratitude. Thank you, God, daily for all the blessings you have given me. And we include our hardships and crosses and the people who hurt us. Just as our Lord included that in his thanksgiving. And now, understandably, I'm not truly grateful for my hardships. And I'm not truly grateful for the Raiders fans. Like, no. But that's why we do it regularly. Athletes at the beginning the couch is comfortable, TV is entertaining, junk food is delicious, and exercise is sweaty, exhausting, and unpleasant. But through the regular practice, they come to not only be good at the craft they practice, they love it. I love being healthy. I love running. I love the track meets. I love being with my friends in the meets, on and on and on. The practice of that which they originally did not feel they loved helps them to grow in love. So we practice daily gratitude for the cross and those who hurt us so that God grows in us authentic love. That we then are able to make that full gift of the selves lay on the grenade even for our murderers as he does. And the last is companionship. When the apostles are in the room waiting for the Holy Spirit, they are in the room together with mom. When Jesus goes and does his earthly ministry, he brings together men, women, disciples, apostles, all the like. He builds and institutes a church. The very first problem God ever seeks to fix is not sin, it's loneliness. It is not good that man should be alone. And the beauty of marriage is that husbands and wives together not only vow to make a full gift of themselves, be martyrs for the ones they love, they vow to help each other do it. I am going to help you carry your cross, and you're going to help me do the same. That is the same for the faith in the church. And whether it's the companionship of the saints and angels, our guardian angel, our mother, whether it's the companionships of those that our Lord has put on this earth, friends, family, or heck, professional help thereof, Never are we meant to be alone. Always with the help and the accompaniment of our Lord and those he puts in our life. And so God, as he prepares us for Pentecost, has shown us to grow in that matrimonial martyrdom love. We must seek to practice humility, thanksgiving, fraternity all dependent and offered to our Lord and surrendered to his will. And in so doing, he by his grace grows that love in us so much 
that we with joyous, joyous hearts and hearts aflame by the Holy Spirit say, I do to giving my life away to the one I love. May we be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit as he prepares us for Pentecost so that our love may grow and we may do what marriage and faith asks us to do. Give ourselves away fully in love to the ones we love as he does for us. Jesus said to him, what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. My brothers and sisters, trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. For the church, that her faithful may ever strive to listen and follow the will of our Heavenly Father, that by the Spirit our faith may continue to grow and we may better serve as his love to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Johnston, Father Justin, all leaders of our church and our world, that they may be consoled by the mercy of God persevere in his ministry by his grace and strength, and be guided by the Spirit to humbly serve all people with the justice and love of the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, those who are in need, and those who care for the sick, the suffering, and the needy, that they may turn to our Lord Jesus Christ as a source of strength, consolation and hope, for he is with us always through our trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, and for the repose of the soul of Robert Maskell, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may receive the bountiful, merciful love of our Lord, so as to reside with him in heaven, for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love. Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God forever. So thank God forever.
lives at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. your spirit. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right and just. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Amen. And with your spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.